Welcome to Tradespoon. My name is Vlad Karpel. I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon. And today we're going to have our weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current market conditions, key support resistance levels, trends, short term, long term, uh, some of the recent trades uh, that I have done, and answer any questions you might have about your subscription. For those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first. Always want to welcome new subscribers. This is my brief bio as Executive Vice President and Head of Technology at Options Express since um, 2007. Oh, Options Express went public, in 2000, uh, went public in 2006. I left in 2007. Since I left Options Express, I started Tradespoon over 10 years ago, um, 2012. So we're very proud of that experience, that journey, um, and mainly because of you. So I want to say thank you to everybody because of you, I'm able to do what I enjoy professionally. Uh, I've been managing and trading my own money since the company went public uh, in 2006. Um, I've been a uh, consultant and investor in several startups here in Chicago. Uh, my passion is education, trading, managing my own money and uh, building models. I do have master's degree in artificial intelligence. Actually, I was writing my master's thesis in artificial intelligence a long, long time ago. But, you know, now it's at the forefront of all the earnings calls. So that's pretty cool. Uh, disclosures are very important. Um, since I'm going to go through some live trading examples, very important to read the disclosures. Uh, trading stock and options involve risk, not suitable for everyone. Uh, if you're new to trading stock and options, I do encourage you to visit the link on your screen. You can pause the screen and just visit that link. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with SEC, FINRA. I'm here to show you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level, how I manage my money for general education and information purposes only. Uh, please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. All right, before we jump into a trading plan, let's talk about current market conditions. Uh, so let's look at spiders. So we do uh, earnings season, I think over 50% of S&P companies already announced earnings. We have earnings from Amazon. Amazon is down, basically giving up yesterday's gains. Um, uh, and then we do have uh, Intel is up 6%, Amazon is down 4%, Capital One Financial turning positive. Um, so. Uh, next week, we're probably going to have close to 75% of all the S&P 500 earnings uh, reporting, including Apple, right? Apple is the last kind of uh, mega cap, trillion dollar market cap company that everybody is waiting for the earnings. So what do we expect uh, long term? We do see kind of this pretty good strong rally of the 50-day moving average. So we pull back to the 50-day moving average on probably worse than expected earnings in the beginning, right? The UPS, AT&T, we had pretty sharp pullback in these names um, and the market did pull back. And today and uh, yesterday, we basically recover all the losses, all the losses from last week. And again, knocking on the door of a year to date high, right? We've seen this kind of scenario throughout the year at the same level so what is the next uh, what is the next uh, um, move right uh, are we uh, and we've seen this kind of thief and trough rally right so on one side right one scenario we kind of you know we're going through these consolidations at the top and then we reverted back we did this in december right we had worse december in long time we had pretty weak march and um, right, and then the question going into June, right? Do we revert back going into summer, or do we make new? You know, do we continue to trade higher, right? So 380 from 413, was it? Let's call it 35 points to the downside, right? Or 35 points to the upside, right? If you're a short-term trader, or even if you're a long-term trader, 30. I mean, 10 percent up, 10 percent down big difference right it's a it's a big difference so what what is the bullish case right the bullish case is that the bar is set very low right and companies like meta right 
expectation was negative earnings, they deliver positive earnings, right? Uh, Amazon, expectation was negative earnings or uh, positive earnings. Meta was negative earnings growth and they deliver positive earnings growth, Meta, right? So uh, bar is set low and you still see these kind of mega cap technologies like uh, Meta, Amazon and um, Microsoft delivering better than expected results, right? Um, and let's assume Apple is also going to deliver similar results to the other mega cap technology and, the, and we're heading higher. Unemployment is still low, right? Unemployment is still low. Uh, consumers are spending, right? We got the you know, data from the GDP yesterday and even though it was uh, you know, lower than expected, but you still see growth in consumer spending, right? So the bottom line, consumer is strong, unemployment is low. JP Morgan said that they're still lending money, right? And you, they don't see liquidity issues um, and uh, uh, loans originations are the same. Standards are not changing and they do see capital inflows, uh, deposit inflows from regional banks. So pretty strong narrative, dollar is weak, right? Dollar continues to be weak. So we have this concept of soft lending, right? Very strong narrative has been a strong narrative since October, right? We, I mean, we went through several iterations from 52 week lows in October, right? But we do see since October, what is this? Six months, more than six months. Let's call it seven, eight months. So for eight months, we continue to make higher highs and higher lows, right? So that's the soft landing narrative and going into summer, earnings are not as bad as expected and the move high, right? That's scenario number one. Right, and as a, as a trader, you always want to go through both scenarios, right? You should never feel like, okay, there's only the market moves in one direction. Market never moves in one direction, right? Market always moves in multiple direction, up and down. There's usually some kind of bias to the upside or to the downside, but you want to go through this different scenario, create a case, and then you just have to make a decision, you know, in, my, in case one, in case two, or I have no idea, and I think it's just going to be neutral, right? So the other scenario is two, right? You you're probably not going to have, you know, as earnings going to wind down in the next two weeks, you're probably not going to have this consolidation for much longer, right? It's already been probably longer than in December, uh, but probably like December, right? It's very similar to November, December consolidation, a little bit longer than it was in February. So at some point market is going to either move up on the soft landing or uh, move down on the hard landing narrative, right? Hard landing narrative is, uh, what is the hard landing? Main, uh, yield inversion, right? So yield inversion, uh, leading indicators deteriorate, manufacturing services, PMI deteriorate, deteriorating, uh, you know, still look very high interest rates, Fed is not pivoting, and you can see revenue slowing down, right? Just because matter is up 10%, but they deliver very mute uh, revenue growth. Right, and same thing goes for Microsoft, same thing goes for Amazon, right? Uh, even though the bar is set low, but soft landing narrative expects that Q3, Q4, the revenue of S&P 500 companies will reaccelerate, where based on GDP data in Q1, uh, lower than expected, and already Q3, Q4, everybody expects negative GDP. Not everybody, but most, economists expect negative GDP, so the revenue will continue to decelerate, right? And uh, the theme of Q4 and Q1, cost cutting structure, right? All these companies cutting cost, and they're able to beat the bad expectations. The idea is that Q2, Q3, Q4, this narrative is not going to work, right? Just because you're cutting your expenses, but if you're not growing your revenue, at some point, you know, does it justify to pay a multiple of 40 on Amazon? So that's the hard landing narrative in a nutshell, right? So what do you do as a trader, right? I don't think going into summer scenario three is plausible, right? There's, it's not going to, this kind of going nowhere in the, you know, in the past since, I mean, basically if, since, well, end of March, right? So for the past months, we didn't go anywhere, right? We're trading in one line. I mean, maybe another week, maybe another two weeks, but at some point it's either move up or move down. So how many, so 
go into the scenario, I would write down a journal with pros and cons, and which scenario do you think is going to happen? Is it going to be one or is it going to be two? All right, so one, we're going higher, two, we're going lower. Michael, thank you, two. Anyone else? Virus, bravo. Logisov, Martin, T, Ron, Rick, Michael, Quan, Jean, Don, Carla, Andre, Steve. Two, two. Anybody, one. Nobody thinks Mark is going higher? That's impossible. Somebody has to think it's. There's always a bull in the market. Okay, everybody's two. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, so everybody said two. My answer is also two, right? If you follow my commentary, video blog, live trading room, you know, I've been bearish since last, you know, for the past 18 months, continue to be bearish. Uh, timing is very difficult, right? I actually thought we're going to be much lower. If somebody in October told me that we're going to be at 414 in April, May, I would say that that's just impossible. But, you know, uh, never say never. Timing is very difficult, right? Um, but uh, again, I think uh, there are more, you know, in December, there were less bearish arguments now that we do have issues with liquidity and default swaps and debt ceiling. Uh, there are just a lot of evidence that um, uh, economic conditions are deteriorating and inflation is still persistently high, right? We got some inflation data from France, Italy, and, you know, we, we see stagflation in Germany. So lack of growth in Europe, still high prices, right? Consumers are still binge spending, right? That's kind of the theme. So inflation is not going anywhere. Interest rates are not going anywhere. That means that at some point, you know, the, the revenue of these companies will continue to decelerate. So my answer is two, right? My answer is also two. The next question becomes, well, if it's two, will this level hold, right? Will will the 350 level hold, right? Yes or no? Um, I'm going to put down no, right? I'm in a camp where going into summer, summer is very volatile. Then we have July, usually there is a rebound in July, but then we have September, October, which are very, usually a bearish time of the year. And I think between now and between now and September, we will retest this level probably multiple times, multiple times. And at some point, uh, we will break down either in during summer or during September, October. That I'm not going to try to predict, you know, it's very hard. Uh, but uh, based on earnings and based on, you know, interest rates decision, you know, we have Fed decision next week, you know, sooner or later, I think the October lows will give away. All right. So that's my view on the market. Any questions about the, my opinion, subscription, dollar, interest rate? Watch interest rates, right? I think bond market has been correct. Equity market has these gyrations, but the, the uh, bond market is more accurate, right? So you'll continue to drop, right? Despite consumers spending a lot of money um, and being healthy and wage growth, uh, unemployment is low. How do you reconcile this? That basically says that the bond traders or bond market believes that Fed will pivot, right? Fed will pivot and start lowering interest rates. But then why would they do this if consumer is still healthy? Well, because again, um, at some point there will be evidence of recession, right? And the demand is going to drop. Recession is going to subside even more. And uh, the magic line is this 3.3%, right? We've knocked on the door of this in you know many times, right? Started uh, basically in December, then January, March, February. So we continue to kind of decelerate, making lower highs, lower lows. Uh, I think the pullback need to have two conditions. One, interest rates have to drop below 3.3 percent. Then you know that the pullback will accelerate. And then one of the strongest soft landing dollar narrative is that dollar has been weak since October, right? It's been extremely high. 
then it pulled back and it stays on this level, right? So for pullback to accelerate, both the interest rates have to drop and the dollar has to rally. Until then, we're just going to see these kind of range bound trading. All right, so what do we offer a trade spoon to help you navigate this um, you know, uncertainty and volatile environment? One is stock for a chaos toolbox, right? You turn on the earnings, so Amazon, Microsoft, Google, it's all about AI, right? AI is going to change our life, change our world. We build these AI models and start building them, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, so we've been do, using machine learning, right? Using artificial intelligence to train, learn on the data and make predictions. Same AI that we're using now. There are a lot of frameworks out there that Microsoft, Google provides, GPT provides. For artificial intelligence so this is the same model it looks at the data trains on the data and then makes predictions uh, for 10 days it basically says 412 when spiders reaches 412 right and spiders right now is at 414 uh, then it's overbought and the trend is down right so we, the downtrend has started. We did have the reversal in two days. Model will probably adjust in the next couple of days if this trend is going to continue. If not, then we are still trading in downtrend. Um, so that's for the next 10 days. If you look at the next same model, but if you look at the six months prediction, Six months model is still very neutral. It basically says, you know, bulls are not winning, bears are not winning. On the upside, we might reach August high, which is 430. On the downside, we might reach December lows. That's your range. Honestly, obviously, even if you're in the soft landing camp, but you can see that, well, maybe we'll get to 430. I personally don't think that will happen, but maybe, right? I mean, Apple it's a home run and Fed comes out and say, listen, inflation is coming down. We're going to start a lowering interest rate. That's a recipe for right away market to jump 430 and beyond, right? If the Fed actually admits we're going to pivot and we're going to pivot because inflation is under control, right? And unemployment is still low and life is good, right? And we avoid the recession, right? If that's the narrative next week during the Fed conference call, well, we're going to be at 430 and more higher. Obviously, if the Fed says, listen, inflation is still persistently high, everybody is binge spending, consumer is very strong, there's no way uh, unemployment is still low, you know, we have to, we're not going to lower interest rates, right? We might raise by 25 basis points, and maybe we're just going to observe, observe what happens. If they say that, we're probably not going to get to 430, and I think the pullback is going to start, right? somewhere you know towards you know end of may middle may end of may the spoolback is going to start um and at that point earnings you know most of us and p500 companies will announce earnings so that's the range right so we provide you model to help you make determination whether you're a short-term trader and you're looking at one hour or 10 days or a longer term trading what the range where the stock market is trading for trader that's very important information right traders care about range and direction right neutral up down and range where's the buy signal where's the sell signal it's a very reliable model i use it every day for day trading or even not for day trading for entering the trade right if it's 414 model market is a little bit overbought i would not chase the rally right if it drops to 404 and you're a short-term aggressive trader, okay, then it's time to consider going long. So those are the models that uh, I um, propose to use. Uh, in terms of signals, in the live trading room, you do see that I very often use either active trader or weekly trader. Right? These are the models that make basically short-term predictions, right? And we vet them, not just looking at the models, but actually analyzing. So you can see Apple, Clorox, um, Pepsi, these are all stocks that are outperforming the market, will give you support and resistance level, and then it's up to you to make a decision if you want to trade it or not. But we do provide you different strategy. I encourage you to look at the pre-market futures. And if you see they're down, then you use strategy A. If they're up or neutral, maybe use strategy B. But we give you suggested entry and exit points. Again, I encourage you to have only four positions at a time. 
especially if you started trading with maximum loss of two and a half percent if you hold position overnight or one percent if you hold in if you're doing day trading right so those are very important considerations when you're using our models active trader this is model models with signals with specific trade ideas so active trader weekly trader monthly trader if you want to know what i'm trading we have different services spread trader shadow trader premium portfolio elite circle all of these are different portfolios that i manage different signals that i manage and that basically means that you can enter your phone and we will tax you right we will get a text message if you're part of the elite subscription or shadow trading um and uh, you can always go to a trader log right and look at different trades i'm doing so today amazon right i use iron condors often during earnings to sell premium right so iron condors that's the amazon put kind of holding for 24 hours collecting half a percent to one percent gain uh i know a lot of people are not comfortable trading options so i do have examples of stock or etf like um, tlt right i you know sold tlt bought tlt 10470 today sold 106 so trade around tlt so again here an example you know one percent gain in short period of time um you do see is i use option spreads so longer term trades often i use either stock or options spread services a lot of people said well you're only an option trader i'm a stock trader or you only a stock trader i'm an option trader in reality i use both i think options are derivative of the stocks there's no reason to use one versus the other there are advantages of using stock there are advantages of using options but it's an expression of the same opinion and you can do it whether you use stock or option all right, any questions on uh, stock for a chaos toolbox, active trader, weekly trader, elite service, and different uh, portfolios. Robo investor stocks only. A lot of people say, Vlad, I don't want to use the word option. It's too complicated. You know, I have to think about time. I have to think about magnitude, direction. That's just too hard. Okay, so we have robo investor where you only, we give you trade ideas with using stock. And you same thing, you get SMS message every time i get in the trade every time i get out any questions on um, subscription elite service active trader weekly trader i do encourage you to look at our learning center let's see newsletters right so newsletter will be i have i will post in twice a week videos right where i give you again one trade id and then support resistance levels and then video blog all right so we have video blog we have regular blog and then robo street so some something to consider uh, we do have education center if you want to learn about options or technical analysis we do have learning center with different guides trading guides and different topics i also encourage you to review all right anything else it's 9 56. any questions do you think the market will react to an increase in quarter or raise in interest rates uh, i mean market always reacts to fed decision right so what I don't think it's the 25 basis points or no points or even 50 basis points. It's not the, the number what matters, it's the tone and the message, right? If the message is that consumer is too strong, spending too much money and inflation is persistently high and we're not gonna pivot this year, I think that would be met as negative message and the market will pull back. And, uh, and actually yield is gonna drop, yield is gonna drop, right? Because the correlation has changed. Now market rallies only when yield goes up and when yield goes down, market pulls back. You know, today, and you can see actually QQQ is turning negative, right? And you, so bond market is right. Yield dropped, but QQQ was up, right? On Amazon earnings and now QQQ is turning negative. Why? Because again, you know, yield is dropping. Right, people are moving out of into treasuries out of technology 
So I think next week when Fed announced their decision, yield is going to continue to drop. You know, will it break this level? That that's hard to tell. Right? It could, right? Because you know, you everybody's waiting for information, and then once information arrives, what do you look for next? Well, there's nothing else to look for, right? We know, you know, macroeconomic data is deteriorating. We know that earnings are down, and every quarter over quarter, it's getting slightly worse and worse. So I'm not sure what the soft landing narrative will look will look like, right? And the biggest uh, you know what i underestimated was china reopening right that was one and you can see china is deteriorating right it's kind of sitting at the ski support it tested it this week not a good you know chart if it breaks through this china breaks through this level again pullback will accelerate right and that's kind of one of the one of the main narrative for the soft land and that china is going to save the world um not the world but the economy stock has run its course what indicators are most helpful in determining when rising stock run has its course very good question i don't think there's one indicator right you look at multiple right i like to look at the retail sentiment right i like to look at the retail sentiment i like to look at the charts obviously right usually you know if you do see that you know for the past 12 months we didn't go anywhere right just kind of with your naked eye we're not going anywhere in the past 12 months and we've been a lot lower in the past 12 months so from technical analysis it's overbought right did we have breakouts yes you know in, in february i didn't think the downtrend will be broken we broke it you know here we broke the downtrend again for a couple of weeks so pendulum swings to exchange. So from technical analysis, I would look that market is losing momentum. Um, I would definitely look um, the most important one. Well, obviously we've created this, so there's a little bit bias. But the six the six months model is a great, very good indication that the market is overbought. Right? Once we approach, it doesn't have to be exactly 4:30. But once we're at 415, 425, 430, 440, right? We've seen overshoot. Market is overbought, right? Especially if the momentum is negative, uh, neutral, right? Momentum is neutral at 415, 425. It's way overbought, right? It's way overbought, and usually it's reverts to this mean. So I would look at the technical analysis, and then I would look at you know macro and microeconomic condition, right? Top to bottom approach. If the leading indicators are de deteriorating, is GDP worse than expected? If small caps, right? If you look at the charts of small caps, right? This does not look like a strong bull market, right? Once you know, uh, Russell 2000 is sitting at the 52-week low, right? So, you know, without regional banks, without small cap, mid mid cap companies, this narrow leadership cannot continue for too long. So small caps people look for semis, right? Semiconductors, also pretty weak price action. I mean, they have rebounded significantly, 62% retracement, but you know they're sitting at the ski support, right? They broke through this support, 244, and the next support is 227, right? So all of those in together are an indication that um, bull market is this bull rally. I don't call it bull market. I still think we're trading in bear market, but it's a, obviously a bull rally over 20%. It's probably coming to an end. So thank you for this good question. What indicators are most helpful in determining when the rising stock has run its course? Right? So that's kind of what people look for. People look for small caps. They're looking for semiconductors. They look at the dollar. They look at the uh, bond market. They look at the sentiment. And they look at the technical analysis. So that's, my, that's how I usually determine you know, whether there is more room to, whether the next black is up or down. All right, 10.02. Okay, so what have we covered? Uh, micro, micro. All right, so most important, right? Most important, almost forgot. Most important is there's a lot of uncertainty, right? On one hand, 
soft landing narrative is very appealing, right? And bulls have been in control for the past eight months. On the other hand, there is more and more evidence that uh, you know potentially this bull run, bull rally, has uh, run its course. So how do you manage the uncertainty? My answer is you have to have a solid trading plan, right? The idea of process versus outcome, right? We all look for making money, right? Growing our assets, and you know, but uh, you cannot do that at the expense of the process, right? So if you break the process, or if you don't have the process, if you don't have a trading plan, it's just a matter of time, especially in the trader's market, right? In the past two years, we didn't go anywhere. So in this kind of market conditions, if you don't have a repeatable, repeatable, simple, plan that you can execute you can give it to anybody right and have them execute right then it's that's an issue so what is my proposal for repeatable simple process that you can follow cash right i mean if you're in soft landing 30 percent in cash if you're in hard landing 50 percent cash but you should you, i believe everybody should try to have a large cash position much higher than it was two years ago, right? When market was in, when we were trading the bull market, okay, maybe you had 20% cash, maybe you had 10% cash. I, this slide hasn't changed. I always said 30%. I do say now we're in the bear market, so it should be higher, 50%. Second one, portfolio drawdown, right? In all of the pages, right? If you go through all of our models and everywhere, um, you know, if you expand these notes, you know, I trade up to 10 positions because I have different services. I've been trading for 25 years. Okay, I have 10 positions. But I recommend that on average, you should not have more than four active positions at a time with maximum loss of 2.5% of account value per position, right? That is the golden rule. You know, if you traded 25 years, okay, maybe you have 10 positions. If you, you know, if you're managing half a million dollars, okay, maybe you have 10 positions. But on average, Four positions, no more than two and a half percent. That means you are not risking any. No, your portfolio drawdown will not be more than ten percent. Whether the market is going to go up by fifteen percent now, or whether it's going to sell off by fifteen percent, you are locked into maximum loss of ten percent. And I propose not to have all four bearish or all four bullish positions. Right now, I'm bearish. So if you're bearish, you have three bearish position, maybe one long position, right? If you're in a soft landing, okay, fine, you can have three bullish position and one bearish. But then you're ensuring that whether the next leg is up 10% or the next leg is down 10%, you're limited to 5%, 7% drawdown. So these drawdowns, this maximum exposure, risk management, that's what define a very you know repeatable process, right? So it's very important to have number of positions and position size, right? And uh, uh, having this repeatable process that you can execute is very important, right? So that's, uh, uh, I encourage you to journal, very important to journal, very important to grade yourself. It's very important to be self-aware, right? Emotional intelligence is extremely important um, and kind of be honest with yourself, right? When you keep a journal, document, have a checklist of what before you put on the trade, have check marks, right? Cash, number of position, position size, Maybe a bit and ask spread, maybe you know number of uh, the volume of trading on exchanges. Maybe you want to avoid meme stocks. There are you know a few rules that we all have, and they vary a little bit, right? Some people only trade meme stocks. Some people never touch meme stocks. Some people trade you know for it. Some people don't. So you have your list, but for the most part, everybody agrees on cash position, position size. Liquidity, right? You want liquid markets. You don't want to be stuck in a position, right? So you want to avoid penny stocks. You want to avoid stocks that don't have a lot of volume, you know, easily manipulated. Um, and um, and some of the other rules we cover, you know, during live trading room, right? Don't try to call the top, right? But look for top building process, right? So we're right now we are clearly building top, right? Um, wait two to three days to confirm trend change, right? It's better be a little bit late to the party than early, right? You never want to be early to the party, right? The host gets upset, you know, what to do, how to entertain you. Uh, same thing in trading. You do not want to jump on the 
trade too early, right? You want to wait for some kind of confirmation. Very often people reference two to three days, I believe in that rule, right? If you see a breakout of any trends or breakout support resistance, you know, if you're doing day trading, you want two to three candlesticks, whatever the time frame you're trading, days, weeks, hours, but you want two to three candlesticks to confirm that the trend is accelerating and changing, right? Very important rule. Um, ABC pattern, volume, and some of the other. All right, I think I covered most of the content for today. I do encourage you to join me on YouTube. We do have live trading room, so I believe in education. If you're new to trading and you talk to any traders, it's a skill, right? It's a skill that you cannot borrow from somebody, you cannot follow, you know, just because you follow Vlad or you follow CNBC contributors, you're not gonna be a great trader. The only way to be a great trader is invest in education, investing in learning process it takes time so i encourage you participate live on wednesday no financial commitment right this is a free broadcast all you have to do is click on subscribe and show up on uh, wednesday if you're busy you have full-time job you have to watch your grandkids okay fine i understand you know there are videos and you can watch them you know also for free right every live trade not every but live trading room gets recorded and you can watch those videos so invest into education, invest into learning process. You have to build memory muscle, right? Just like if you want to play piano or you want to paint or you want to, you know, any skill, chess, you know, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. It, have, it, it gets, you have to, it's a repetitive process and you do have to get into this free uh, floating mind, right? In a lot of these psychology books, the concept of free floating mind, right? Where you don't, when you play piano and you're a professional piano player, you don't think about notes and what's the next note I'm gonna press. It just happens automatically. Trading, it's the same thing, right? It takes time, be patient. And if you're patient and you invest into education, I believe everybody can be successful. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? I'm gonna stick around for maybe a couple more minutes, answer your questions. If not, then I will see you hopefully at the closing bell or uh, tomorrow or next week. Question, most European indexes are close to their high, right? Yes, so Germany. I use EW, sorry, EWG, not Japan. They're trade, right, they're, I mean, they let the sell off, right? Everybody thought that Europe is gonna fall apart, but it didn't, right? Same, same idea, if you look at the, similar to, uh, it's same chart as semiconductors, right? 60% retracement, right? I don't, I, I don't believe that you know United States will uh, sell off, but uh, you know Germany or France is going to rally. That doesn't happen. They're just too interdependent. So one can outperform the other. I do buy into that theory, but if United States is going to pull back 15%, that means Germany and European Union is also going to pull back. Right now, it's it's, a, it's the same thing. Everybody was so fearful that Europe is going to freeze or fall apart, right, get into recession. And GDP today, I mean, it's worse than expected, but it's, it's stagflation, right? It's zero, 0 0.1 or something like that. So, and at some point, people say, well, that's not enough to justify the multiples, right? We expect Germany and France to grow, and if they're not growing, and you know, just because the you know energy crisis is avoided, that's not enough to be very close to 52 week high. So the pullback will start. If we are about to start downward path, which US indexes will fall the most? I think QQQ, I mean, it rallied, right? It sold off the most, right? It's the same thing, It's it, it was down 37%, right? It's down 37%. It did bounce back significantly, but that was the biggest drop, right? You have IWM, right? Russell 2000 down 33%. So small caps, Russell 2000, semiconductors, right? So let's look at semiconductors, you know, 50%. 
these are the indexes that will sell off the most right they rally the most and they sell off the most so always keep in mind these correlations right so if you short smh and you short iwm and you short qqq their chart patterns looks very similar right the charter looks very similar you know smh moves one and a half times qqq or an iwm so something to keep in mind right but they one doesn't you know you know all you're doing if you're looking for the most drop in theory two and a half percent rule apply so if the if you never want to lose more than two and a half percent that means you cannot invest the same amount in smh that you do in qqq or you do in consumer staples because they move in different magnitude right so in theory you know if smh moves two times qqq then when you shorten smh it's only it should be you know one to one and a half in terms of exposure something to keep in mind thank you for your question tj are we still making new laws i'm in the camp that the laws will not hold right because i'm if, if you're in hard landing if you believe that recession is coming right even if it's a mild and shallow recession which most likely is the case that's not factored in into the October lows, right? Everybody is trading, you know, the reason, you know, Amazon, if you are looking at, uh, you, know, you know, interesting interactive chart of Amazon, right? I think the chart of Amazon is telling a good story of what's going to happen to the rest of the market, right? Right, so when first earnings announced right at 4 p.m. that you know AWS is still growing, you know, consumers are still spending, you know, there are positive earnings where there were negative earnings last quarter, you have 10% move, right? And nothing really happened, right? Basically, when the conference call started, you know, they repeated the same thing that AWS margins are contracting. Right. They said this before the earnings. There, there is uh, nothing really happened that would cause after 10% rally, right? After 10% rally, to have now whatever 15% pullback. So that's kind of a perfect example, kind of buy on rumors, sell on the news, right? Because once the news arrive and there is nothing else to look for, then you have these pullbacks. So whatever happened to Amazon, I think is going to happen to Apple. It's going to happen to Microsoft. It's going to happen to the rest of the stocks. Right? Microsoft, same idea. Yes, it had a strong rally, but guess what? It was, I think, a 301 post earnings. So it's a very strong price action, but very little continuation, right? Very little continuation, up 1% from the initial announcement. So at some point, people will say, well, Microsoft is also not growing fast enough to justify multiple of what's the multiple was there p 32 right it doesn't justify 32 pe just because they have chat gdp and they're gonna you know take over the world well but the revenue is not growing so the, so chat gpt is not going to help you at least you know in the next couple quarters so i think similar price actions are going to be across i mean there are always going to be winners right and maybe microsoft doesn't revert you know maybe chat gpt is enough artificial knowledge enough or LLY, right? There are certain stocks that are, you know, have certain underlying themes and they are not being affected by recession, but I think there will be very few of those. Um, all right, any other questions? TJ, thank you. All right, guys, you've been awesome. Thank you for participation. Love to have you at the closing bell or live trading room. If not, please don't forget YouTube great resource to stay in tune if you do like the content and you find it useful do me a favor if you haven't clicked subscribe click on subscribe and uh, if any of those videos are useful please share them on social media thank you very much and have a great day